Welcome everyone. This is the Psychedelic Support monthly speaker series, and I'm your host and co-founder of Psychedelic Support, Dr. Allison Fiducia. You can also call me Allie. And today we are veering from our normal format, which is usually a presentation or a discussion around current research or psychedelic medicine approaches and therapy to have an experiential webinar uh, where you will have the opportunity to work with the expanded state of consciousness that you have personally experienced, whether that is from a dream state or a psychedelic journey. Jennifer Allen will be guiding us through a unique integration model she developed called Art for Access, which offers a bridge connecting ancient practices, therapeutic modalities, and the transform transformative power of the arts. Art for Access comes out of her work with dreams, shamanic drum journeys, and her art therapy background. Jennifer is a licensed marriage and therapist marriage and family therapist, as well as a board certified art therapist with over 30 years of experience specializing in grief and trauma recovery. She holds a certificate in psychedelic assisted therapy from CIS and a ketamine assisted psychotherapy training certification. And she is a full Mesa care carrier and student of shamanism and trained in depth hypnosis and yoga. Currently, she is offering ketamine-assisted psychotherapy and integration of expanded states and offers clinician uh, integration and retreats, which I have personally been able to experience some of Jennifer's integration offerings and found tremendous value in her ability to guide you to connect with deeper aspects of your psyche and the spirit connection there. Uh, which is why we have recently partnered with Jennifer to bring greater awareness around a five-day retreat that she offers for practitioners and clinicians in a beautiful location in Big Sur, California. So this is a rare and unique opportunity for clinicians and practitioners to deepen their connection and knowledge of psychedelic states. So I'll be sharing some links in just a moment in the chat so you can learn more about this retreat and also to connect with Jennifer and her website. This video will be made available after the session on our website. Uh, we will also send out a follow-up email once the video is ready. And today, if you have like an eye mask and a journal, that'd be great to get those handy. If you happen to be at work or in your car, you could come back and watch the video later and do the experiential part. And I see a lot of you saying hello in the chat. That's great. We encourage you to do so. And uh, with that, Jennifer, I'm going to pass it off to you. Mm, thank you, Allie. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. And thank you for that very thorough introduction. Like, oh, you saved me having to go over that. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm eager to share this um, process. Like you had mentioned, it, it came out of my work with dreams. And as you can imagine, the, the dream state is not that they all source from the same place. The, the dream space, the journey space, all of these non-ordinary states, um, kind of all roads lead to Rome, just different vehicles. And so it was a very natural way to, when I started working with um, psychedelic integration, this was a very natural um, way to go in. And basically we're, um, you know, with integration, the whole point is to bring these expanded states or these, ex these experiences that are so far out from our regular thinking and consensual reality. We have different senses available to us there. Um, things are not able to translate into language very easily. So we wanna bring those into our little consensual reality. And the reason for that is to grow this. So otherwise, these two things stay separate. And then we just visit that and like, oh, that's a great time. And look at what we saw, wasn't that great? And we come back and we do the daily grind with consensual reality and nothing really changes. So my passion for integration comes from wanting to bring this into this in a way that grows this. So imagine over time that consensual reality starts growing wider, deeper, in a way that they're not that different. 
And that way we would have so much more available to us. We would be informed by so many other things. We would have different ways of knowing that aren't yet available to us here in this, in this realm. Um, and so when I'm saying consensual reality, just so we all are on the same page in this consensual reality, it's the, the way that we um, know reality, our five senses in this case. And we all agree, this is what reality is. And we kind of have to do that to get along in the world to make sure we're driving on the right side of the road and you know that we all can manage together. Um, so I'm not dissing consensual reality. It's just that um, you know we have some troubles in the world that came from that very small box way of being. And so I think it was Albert Einstein that said, you can't um, uh, fix a system from where the um, problem originated. You have to go outside of it. So hence the going outside of it. Now I keep doing this and then this and wanting this to come over here. So how do we do that? Um, that's where I find art to be extremely helpful. We need a bridge. So I'm calling these bridge practices and this model that I'm sharing with you uses bridge practices. They're actually non-ordinary states um, like creativity. Any of you that have had a um, been in the creative flow, that is a non-ordinary state. You know it is when you lose track of time, you get really, you're into something, you don't even know where this is coming from, but this thing is coming, you know, maybe it's a song, maybe you're creating something on paper, maybe you're building something and you're in the flow of it and you don't seem to know where it came from, you're just going with it. That is what we're looking for as the bridge to the expanded state. Um, so, and there's also, there's many ways to be creative. However, we want the ego to be at rest. We want the ego to be um, still available. You still have agency. So different than an expanded state, say from a psychedelic, um, where you may not have agency of your imagination. Um, the bridge states or the bridge um, practices, you still have agency, but your ego is taking a little nap, a little rest. It can come back online at any time, but it's kind of rested. Other um, bridge states might be um, depth hypnosis, um, some yoga practices, pranayama, breath work, um, drum, shamanic drum journeys. These are all excellent bridges. So in the art for access process, we'll be using the shamanic drum journey and the creative process and we'll use stream of consciousness writing. So stream of consciousness writing is a way to introduce language in a way that allows the ego to keep its nap time going. We want to be under the radar of the ego mind, the thinking mind, the one who's judging. And so it's pen to page nonstop. Whatever is coming through, it just goes right out through your hands. And I oftentimes when I use stream of consciousness writing, I'll go with my non dominant hand because it has different information than my dominant hand. And I encourage you to experiment with that today in our experiential just to see what I'm talking about. It's, it's really interesting how that works. Of course, it's harder to navigate and to write. And that's actually really helpful because you get to you get to where you need to go without a lot of fluff. So we use the um, the bridge state of the shamanic drum journey in the very beginning, because what I found in my work as an art therapist and working with groups and, and doing workshops, I've done, a, I did a lot of workshops in the creative process um, before I moved into dream work and then psychedelic integration. And I still do that work, but it's kind of, it actually now is just expanded into these other areas. But what I found was you just can't go cold into the creative process or most people can't. And ironically, it's the people that are uh, like artists or people that create a lot that actually have the hardest time because they have an expectation of, of themselves and people who don't do art don't, although, you know, so many people have that message. Oh, I'm not an artist. I can't, um, I can't draw. I, I have these images in my mind, but oh my God, they're never going to get onto the paper. And so I want to invite you right here, right now um, to let that one go. And every time it revisits you, if it does, because it will and in this process, it's just, it just happens. You just connect with your breath and you let that one go and you come back to your body and you trust whatever's happening and keep rolling. So one way I found to help people access that creative 
flow more easily is to start with something that puts them in a semi non ordinary state or a bridge state. Shamanic drum journey works really well and breath work also works really well. So in this process, I use the drum and the drum comes from many, many, I think every, I think it's 99.9 .9 something percent of cultures all use the drum uh, in their um, early ways. Um, so we all, and I think that the drum for humans is innate to us with our heartbeat. You know, this is where it started and this is why we can resonate with that beat. Now, if you increase the beat, like to about there, there's a certain um, pattern. If we can go um, to a certain speed, it keeps the, what happens in the brain is it moves the brain toward theta state, that state before sleep, not sleep, but you might relate to theta state for like when you're uh, about to fall asleep, how things start to morph into other things. And that's a highly creative state and where new knowing comes in and it's things don't follow the rules of our usual logical brain. And that's what um, is really beautiful about using the shamanic drum journey is the rhythm that's at that particular pace helps the brain do that. So today in our experiential, we won't have a long journey, but we will have a journey. And for some of you that aren't used to listening to a drum this way, it it might be you know challenging to have it uh, have your brain go to theta state that quickly. But I really encourage you to practice this because your brain becomes accustomed to it, and then it takes very little. It like a five minute journey could bring you like all sorts of fruitful things. I tend to do journeys that are 12 minutes at the minimum. Um, I think 12 minutes is the sweet spot. We will have time for less than that, but you'll still get something from it. But I'm just encouraging you in case it feels like, oh, I'm still thinking, give yourself a little bit more time um, when you go back to this at another time. I encourage you to use this process for yourself. Um, I have a recorded drum journey. I can make that available. I'll, I can talk to Ali after about that. Um, that's just a simple 12 minute me drumming. Um, and you can certainly find them online as well. So the drum has its purpose of loosening the, um, mm, the state. And so our consensual reality box starts to expand a little bit, but we're not so far out that we've lost track of anything. We still have full control of, of everything. If we needed to get up and go to the bathroom, we could. Um, but it's loosening it enough to be able to reaccess the expanded state. So I use the drum journey. Um, actually, in our case today, I'm going to drum a little bit to invite you to bring forward the, the expanded state that, you, that you're bringing to this today, whether it's from a dream, from breath work, from a psychedelic, it doesn't matter. So um, I'm going to drum you a little bit to get to the portal because otherwise, if we were doing this on a long form kind of way, we would have a process of getting to what the portal is and people would share so that you'd have an idea of everybody's portal could be very different. And that's the entry point to the drum journey. So I'm using a lot of terms here. So, so let me, um, let me give you the metaphor of an iceberg. Um, I'll be using a few metaphors like the bridge is one of them. The iceberg is another. So when you imagine the iceberg, I want you to imagine just like, you know, it's kind of a thing in psychology where there's the tip of the iceberg out of the water, that's our consciousness. And then there's the big, big wide ocean. And then underneath is this massive, massive other part of the iceberg, which is our unconscious. Um, and then think about the water, the whole entire vast ocean is the collective unconscious. So all that's connected to all like archetypes and all times throughout all life forms, like all of that consciousness lives in that ocean. And so our, ex our experience in the expanded state is the place that we're going to dive into that ocean. Um, and, and we pick up a part of the journey that has a lot of um, juice for us, a lot of energy. And it might be something we're curious and want to understand more about or, or um, want to go further with. So that's that's part of what we're doing here different than typically how we think about integration or even dream work. You, instead of going back and kind of looking at and analyzing something, we want to unfold it further. So, but we, we need to actually reaccess that to do that. And we want to reaccess and then keep in with it, keep going. So the other metaphor I like to bring is the river. 
we're going to step back into that river of consciousness where you could be connected to all things into that flow the creative flow into the place where you connect with source so any non-ordinary state can put you back in that river and we're using these semi non-ordinary states to do that so as i'm gonna I'm, i will guide you through a portal you don't have to know what yours is right at this moment but let's just say there that we you know what your portal is that's going to be your entry point to dive in underneath that iceberg so the portal i will have you bring it into your whole being your whole felt sense i'll make one up just so you can get a, a sense of it so let's say i had um an experience where um i i saw a loved one in this state and they didn't look like themselves at all and in fact they it was hard to even explain what they looked like but i knew it was them i recognized them and they were they're deceased now and I felt so strongly this connection with them in this understanding of what they were relating to me, even though it wasn't in words. And I don't know how I knew that, but it felt so strong at the time. And I'm not, I was clear in the experience what the message was. And now I'm, I'm wanting to revisit that because I've kind of, I came down to this reality and I kind of lost it. So I will bring into my being the, um, the felt sense, the felt sense is the sensation in the body the what the energy my energy body feels like what was the energy of that oh it felt um i felt very ex like my heart was wide open to this like loved one and 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 i felt the recognition and the affection and oh yeah yeah i remember yes I, there you are i don't you know look like how you looked here but i know that this is you and i can understand what you're telling me and i'm receiving your message right now and so i have a really strong i can feel love i can feel an openness and a curiosity like oh and a, and a surprise I can't believe this is happening and so I start to bring that into my being the emotions of it the energy of it how my body feels in it I feel kind of like expanded here I'm, I'm not so aware of my my lower body most of the energy is like right here right here right here um, so I bring that really potently forward and so this is what I would have you do I'd say so bring it forward bring the whole felt sense of that experience as vividly as you can, all the thoughts, all the emotions, and then let it go when I begin to drum, and then I start drumming. Doo, 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 doo. And so you let it go, and you let your mind just go where it goes, and it kind of morphs and moves, and sometimes it'll feel like, oh, nothing's happening. I'm just listening to the drum. That's okay. But if, you're, if your thinking mind comes back online and says, oh, yeah, I forgot to do the laundry. Oh, that's right. I have to call so-and-so. You just invite it every time you become aware of it, just like in meditation, you say, oh, you can rest now. Bring your full ears, your full awareness back to the drum beat. The drum will take care of your ego. It will help kind of lull it over here and just say, you're okay. We'll come back to you in a little bit. Um, and, and just let the morphing happen. You don't even have to go back to whatever that portal was. You just keep letting it unfold and go somewhere else now. Now you're in the river. You're gonna end up downstream somewhere else than where you started. So we're not so interested in trying to go back and rehash the whole thing. We want to open the key part of it and follow it and flow it and go forward. So that is the going down under the iceberg is that part. And so now as you're going, you're diving down with the drum journey. And when you get under that iceberg and you're in the collective unconscious and your own unconscious is right there, it's all available. That's when we want to gather the gems through the creative window. So the creative window is much easier to access when you've started it, you front loaded it with already a, a bridge state like drum journey. So things are a little relaxed. Now we move right into quick sketches, depending on our time. Normally I would do three quick 90 minute, I mean, 90 second um, sketches. We'll probably do two of those, those today, or they might be 60 seconds. I will guide you through and I'll tell you exactly what it is, but the idea is that it's quick. Now, the reason it's quick is not to frustrate you, even though you might be frustrated by that. It's to stay under the radar of the ego mind that wants to judge, that wants to control it, that wants to say, oh, I know I could make this into something really good. Or, oh, in my journey, I had this amazing mandala that was so many colors and oh, it was so amazing. There were so many layers to it. There's no way I can get that on the paper in 90 seconds. And so I'll tell you one of my, my best tricks for that is forget about that <laughs> forget about trying to relay the image it's not about the image directly it's about let the image be in your internal my um, mind's eye notice how you sense in your whole body what you feel when that's there and trust that to come out your hand 
So it's not a direct translation. We already have that here. It's more, how do you feel what's happening as you see that in your mind's eye? Trust whatever comes. Again, if you feel yourself get too controlling, use your non-dominant hand. And if you still feel yourself getting controlling and like, ah, oh, I, I need to make it look like I need to make it look, I need to be okay with this. Um, it has to look pretty, whatever. If that happens again, just return to your body, breathe it out with the out breath, return to your body, use your non-dominant hand with the media. And even if that's hard, close your eyes, pick up the media and just move on the paper. A lot of times the translation of an, a complex inner visual is actually movement. So if I got that mandala in my mind and I'm feeling it with my hand, oh, it's like this. It's the movement of like this, if I was to do this, and then I just pick up a piece of art media and I put it on the page, it's like this. And that translation makes m much more sense to me. I don't have to get caught up in trying to do all the details. Now, it might be that there was a, just a strong blue. So I'll just put blue up and blue, blue, blue. You know, so it's not what, it doesn't have to be a symbol. It might be, but it might not be. It might be totally abstract. It might be the felt sense coming out through a movement on the page. So while you're down and that creative window's open and you're doing these quick sketches, we're gonna do two of them in this case. And I'm gonna ask you to, okay, find a good stop place. Okay, move on to the next one. You might not be finished. You're still gonna move on. So we wanna get the impressions from the journey kind of quickly. And then we'll move into one that's a little bit longer. In this case, it'll be a few minutes, which will feel like forever after you've had 90 seconds. And I will guide you through that. It'll be a little bit more um, like weaving the first two together or an element from one of them that you wanted to do more with, or it might be something that's yet unexpressed that wants to find its way. So remember, we are under the iceberg in that, in that rich place where the gems are, the creative windows open, we wanna act while we're here. And we want to um, stay under the radar of the ego. So as soon as any judging mind comes in, we return to our, we just let it go, take a, take a break, you're over there, return to myself and pick up the art media, keep going. So after that next image, uh, we'll move into, um, well, we'll have a free association before that. The free association will be the first word phrase that comes to mind with um, no censoring. And again, we gotta use, we're bringing language in as we start to come up from that uh, deep, the depth that we just went to. So we start to weave in language, but in a way that the that's still below the radar. So we'll free, we'll do some free association, and then we'll move into um, a stream of consciousness writing that I had mentioned before, pen to page, and I will guide you with that as to what the cue is. And from that, we'll do uh, two of those. And then from those, there'll be something to go back into the image with. And I'm hoping that we have enough time to go back into the image because it can be quite fruitful. Sometimes it ends up being another image. Um, so it would be good if you had four pieces of paper to use. It'd be great if you had colored art media. And if you just have a pencil, that's fine. Go with, it's better, it's, you, you'll work with it. Um, any kind of art media is fine. Let's make it something that you can use fairly quickly. Like, um, like watercolors might be challenging or anything that requires water. You won't have a whole lot of time. Um, or paint might be a little challenging, but like oil pastels, colored pencils, crayons, anything like that. So now we're, we've gone back into the image, but we've also brought language into the mix. We are starting to resurface. And so the last stream of consciousness writing kind of brings us back up to the surface. And how we surface, we have, we're now way down, so we're in a whole different place than where we started. The information that comes is very different. And so now what's here, how we come to what our integration practice might, what it might look like is through the sharing. Sharing is such an important part of the integration process. You could do this whole process and come out here and then, you know, do some journaling about what the process was for you. However, when you are with a few people, ideally a bigger group, where you can um, hear yourself share it and um, hear other people share theirs, it is very synergistic, very helpful in identifying what the um, practice might be, what emerged out of that experience that you can work with and bring and help bring that state into this reality. And oftentimes it's, it's very rarely something concrete, like, oh, I need to, um, that's what I need to do. I need to uh, look up the word such, such and such and um, 
and that's the, gonna be the name of my business. It's very rarely that. It's more often being informed by something. Oh, this, this something that came through, I, I want to be informed by this, or I wanna look at my relationship to this and make that a practice, or it might be an energy practice. I'm hoping we'll have a little bit of time to at least have one person share so I can help you kind of find the place of what the practice might look like. So with all of that, that was the overview of what we're going to move into. So I want you to think of the river, you're stepping into the river, you're, you're, you're gonna come out somewhere else. Even as you make the art, every mark you put down it might inform the next mark that then informs the next mark. You don't have to have it preconceived and it's better that you don't. Remember the preconception mind, we're gonna leave it over here for this experience. Um, just thinking if there's anything else I need to um, prepare you with before we start. I think it's, I've probably said enough, probably best to move into an experiential now. So you can get yourself comfortable and have your eye shades available and on. Have your art media, whatever you're gonna use out by your side. So it's gonna be really easy to get to after the drum journey. Just take a moment to get yourself settled. And different than how I would do this in a longer um, um, situation, I'm going to drum to, to help you orient to your portal. So you don't have, you're not going in through the portal yet. I'm going to help you with that. Right now, you're just finding your breath. Allowing yourself a few deep exhales just to clear any residual business of the day, just setting it aside as we engage this process. Just continuing to find your breath. Just gonna make an adjustment so the drum sounds better. Letting the breath lengthen and deepen. Letting your body know that it can relax deeply in this process. And as your body relaxes, your mind relaxes. And as your mind relaxes, it expands and can more easily locate that experience that you're bringing to this practice today. And just allowing yourself to revisit that non-ordinary state, no matter what the origin of it was, any part of it. It may not be visual. It might be through the body. It might be sensations. It might be emotions. It might be a state of being that's outside of the usual experiences that you have in the consensual realm. It might be story-like, like dreams often can be. And whatever it is, allow yourself to move toward the part of it that has the most energy. It doesn't have to be something that was pleasant. It, it can be aversive. Aversive is just as much energy as something pleasant. It's more, how much juice does it have for you? And if you have curiosity about it, drumming 
for about five minutes and I'll call you back with three rapid successions of drums and I'll call you back verbally. gently while maintaining this state, just gently bringing yourself to a way that you can work with your art media, coming from the journey directly into the image making, just allowing whatever wants to be expressed, an impression of the journey in this first sketch. 
really trusting whatever comes, knowing that it's just a short sketch, trusting each mark that you put down may inform the next one. You don't have to know what it is, really allowing an opening and trusting. And then finding a good stopping point for that first image. And moving into the second one, again, just allow, allowing whatever impression from the journey that wants to be seen, that wants to find its way out to be externalized. Let it come through your hand. And if you're um, wanting to try uh, something different, you can use your non-dominant hand. And again, trusting each mark letting it inform the next one. Good. And then finding a good stop point for that one. And then taking the two sketches that you've just made, turn them in all different directions, sideways, upside down, the other way, and just allow yourself to free associate to them, like to act as if you've never seen them before and you're now just looking at them for the first time and they're new to you. And allow the first three or more, but the first three words or phrases that come uncensored, the first, boom, 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 and just write them into the image or in the corner somewhere. Sometimes these words like seem like they belong in the image. Sometimes they just go in the corner, just so that you could see it when you look at the image. And do that for both images. Good. And then the, the words that you wrote or the phrases that you wrote, just underscore the one that has the most energy for you right now. And again, it doesn't have to be something that you like or prefer. It might be just, it's just energy, one way or the other. Something you're curious about or that makes no sense to you and you don't even know where it came from. Maybe it's that one. Good. Okay, so this next image is going to be, it can be a weaving together of the first two. It can be something that just got catalyzed from that word that you chose. It can be something from the journey that hasn't yet found expression. Or there might be an element in one of the uh, images that you just created that you want to go further with. So we're going to take a little bit longer. We'll take, mm, mm, we'll take three minutes. And you can go ahead and get started and allow that. It's going to be a little bit more time, so just remember to breathe and come back to your body if you get too caught into the headspace. And really trusting each line. Just really let it be an intuitive creation. And there's no way to do it wrong. So however you do it is exactly perfect for you at this time.
So you have about another minute. And just starting to find a good stopping point. It may feel like you're not complete, but just a good place to pause for now. Good. And so oh, now I want you to choose an element of your image. And an element is just any, it could be a shape, it could be a color, uh, it could be a symbol that's in your image. Um, like, let's just say I had an image here of a red background and a yellow dot and a blue jaggedy line. Um, I, maybe I'm going to choose the red background and I'm going to speak as that. I call that gestalting the image or gestalting the element. So I'm going to become the red background and I'm going to speak how it is for me to live in the environment of this image. And you're using the image that you just made, that last one for this experience. And then I'm going to do a stream of consciousness writing for a minute, pen to page, I'm the red background. This and I'm I'm always behind everything else. This blue jagged line is is dominating, and that yellow dot over there. I kind of like it, but it's again. I just feel like I'm here to support everybody, and I don't have a place of my own. I'm just animating it for you. It becomes you animate it and write from that place. So pick your element become it and speak from its perspective in your image and you can go ahead and start the stream of consciousness pen to page writing right now and you can try using your dominant non-dominant hand if you um if you like it might bring something else to you Good, and just finding a good stopping point. And just rereading what you just wrote and underline anything that's especially poignant that has energy for you. Maybe it's one word, maybe it's a few words. You didn't have much time to write normally. If we were an expanded process, this would be more like three to five minutes. Just go ahead with what you have. We want to get to know that element. And so kind of what you just gleaned from that element. Now we're going to do another stream of consciousness writing process. And the writing cue for this is um, you are asking that element and then you're going to answer as the element. What is it that you need? So you're going to answer as the elements in the image. The context is in that image. And you can go ahead and begin. And then just finding a good stop point. And go ahead and reread that and just underscore anything that stands out for you that has energy.
Good. And so we want to get to know that element, which is an aspect of you that came through this whole experience. And now we need to, we want to know what it needs. And then we want to give it what it needs visually. So go back into that image, or you can create a new image and provide what it needs visually, metaphorically. And we'll have two minutes for that. Good, and then just coming to a good stopping point there. And then one more stream of consciousness writing process as we are coming from the bottom of that iceberg, coming back up to the surface, bringing language back in, but still staying under the radar. So as that element in this new situation, in this new environment, write as it again, like, who am I now? I am the one who and then just start writing as about yourself as that element in the new situation. And it'll just be about a minute's worth of writing. I'm just seeing that someone asked for the last prompt and we're complete with the writing right now, but that last prompt for the writing was to speak as the element in the new environment of now what it, when it has what it needs, who am I now when I have what I need as that element that you are working with. And so now reread what you just wrote and underscore the parts that stand out to you. And you might even choose one of them like as as the title for that piece. Like you can circle it like, oh yeah, that's it right there. That's the crux of it. And I'm realizing that in this very um, condensed version of this process that it, I am moving through it rather quickly, but I will say the nature of it, especially in the image making part, is quick. It's quick on purpose. Same with the, the writing part, it's fairly quick. We don't want to think too much here. We want to get to all to where we just got to. Now that we're surfacing out the other side, we just went down under that iceberg, we're coming up over here. Now would be the time if we were, for instance, in the clinician's integration retreat or in any group that where I use this process, this is where we would um, connect to the whole group and each person have a chance to share and 
in the clinician's integration retreat, this is where we would do a deep dive. So we use the image as the, the opening, the catalyst for that deep dive. And it's very fruitful because oftentimes it's, um, informa it carries information that the person wasn't aware of previously. But I'm realizing now in this format that I can't really have someone share except you, Ali. <laughs> Um, well, I could share or I could allow one person from the audience. I can promote them to be a host. Um, but I'm I'm down to to be your your share for today. Okay. 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 So if you could share anything about your process and your image. Yes. So um my process was about bringing to mind an experience I had that was really abstract. Um, but I knew it related to an intuitive process. And so um, for the third image, I will hold it up here for you all to see. There's a swirl in the middle and then sort of this outlet. And then I felt like this was sort of a block. <laughs> okay, so um, where I went with my creative writing or freeform writing was focusing on the swirl in the middle. Mm -hmm. So you became that element. I became that element of the swirl. And in the first writing exercise, I was thinking swirling and flowing of ideas and emotion, one leading to the next, but without any direction on knowing the end. And then I took this into, I wanted to know where is this going? Where are these ideas and emotions leading me to? And what kind of came through was that there are no mistakes or errors in following the flow of ultimate truth. And then my third drawing here, mm. um, kind of came through as many swirls and in the writing I say I'm the one who swirls and then finds the next thread that leads me to another teaching experience or intuition the pattern repeats the destination is not the end the swirls are the purpose mm. Ooh, the swirls are the purpose that's a good mantra. <laughs> so, so I might ask you, like, do you have a sense of what might be a good practice from that experience, from where you came all the way through? You're downstream now from where you started. Yes. Um, so, you know, the the initial thing that came to mind was I was feeling blocked and I need to be going in a direction and knowing where I'm heading what is the end goal? And that's a lot of my probably logical thinking mind there online. Um, but from this, I'm really taking that the unknowing and the um, intu intuitive part of myself or those ways of connecting with the world are, are very important. And maybe the logical goal oriented nature of things is less can be less impactful sometimes than just going with the swirl and the flow and enjoying that process more than having an end in mind mm. and might there be a way where you could actually put that into practice like in your world um in any way, it could be movement, it could be on a page, it could be with whatever it is you're working with and projects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the art piece really comes to mind as, as you said in the beginning, I'm not someone who like does a lot of art, but I can see that that process of um, freeform writing or freeform drawing can really be a means to that end of doing something that isn't so um, start, middle, finish sort of process of some uh, end piece that needs to be created, so. Great, and then you could just, for those of you that walk, that saw those two drawings and the difference between them, and when you, when you allowed that element to share what it needed and then provided it, 
the just just the sense of what it felt like in that other one even if i was just to move in the way that you were just moving like if i was to try to make my body make the same movement that you were made in that second one versus the you know like <laughs> so even our, our bodies are such good vehicles of integration also so for instance when you're like you understand like oh yeah that that works for me i can use this in the art i i can do um that free form art like that or intuitive art or intuitive um, writing or stream of consciousness where it's just kind of going and flowing. Those are great. And then and then I'm just adding some ideas to so people get the idea of, of how, you know, it can be many different ways. It could also be, well, when I start to move my body like that, like if I feel like I'm getting stuck and I feel it like here or my energy is stuck or I can't think of anything new, what if I just start moving my body in the way that I was moving on the page, but I make it really big, you know, like that. Or what if I put paper in front of me and then did that <laughs> and then got the visual feedback of that experience and it reinforces something else. It's just another way, not to say that the there's, there's a place for logic and it's very helpful structure. And there's this something else that can, that can move through that. That was very flow. It's like it moved through that block. It moved like a river moving around something. Mm -hmm. so did you did you have a um oh you just said your mantra i was gonna say did you have a, a like a statement or a word that was like the key thing but you just said it yes yeah, swirls are the purpose yes i love it, <laughs> love it. So, thank you well, thank you for being willing to share ali yes we're gonna um send out an email to everybody and we'll include that along with these other links with connecting with Jennifer, if you want to learn more about this clinician practitioner's retreat in the beautiful Big Sur, uh, we had a very small taste of it today. So five days of working with Jennifer and her partner, Kristen, out in the beautiful Big Sur. I highly recommend it. I've had the pleasure of being there and I have had a phenomenal experience. So um, that's why we are wanting to do some outreach to have others be able to join these offerings. And so I just dropped the re the links there and I'm going to go ahead and close the session. So thank you so much for leading us on this journey today. I can't wait to put this video out and thank you for your time and your expertise uh, and everybody for being here. Mm -hmm. I hope you have a lovely weekend. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Allie. Yeah, thank you. Take care, everyone.